So guys, going forward, let us start with the introduction to data serialization and data deserialization. So what exactly data serialization is? Data serialization is a mechanism to transform the program's internal data structures into a form that could be sent to a remote machine over the network. Right? So note the word here, program's internal data structures. Now what is program internal data structure? Suppose you are running some program and your program may maintain certain link lists, certain queues, trees or many other data structures. Those data structures are called program's internal data structures and those data structures manages the program data. So data serialization is a process that converts the data which is being managed by your program's internal data structures into a form that could be sent to a remote machine over the network. You simply cannot send your program's internal data to a remote machine by simply copying the bytes of your data over the wire. You actually need to refine your data before sending it over the wire or over the network to a remote machine. So data serialization is performed by a sending machine. In the coming slide, we will discuss the reason that why it is essential to perform data serialization and data deserialization. Similarly, data deserialization is actually opposite of data serialization. Data deserialization is a mechanism to transform the serialized data and convert or reconstruct the internal data structure of a process. So remember, data deserialization is performed by the receiving process. And this receiving process is actually receiving the serialized data from the sending machine. So data deserialization is a mechanism which applies on the serialized data being received by the receiving machine and convert this serialized data into program's internal data structures. So for example, if this serialized data represented a link list on the sending machine, then data deserialization is a process to reconstruct the same link list on the receiving machine from this serialized data. So do not worry, we will going to practice all these concepts by writing uh, actual code to perform serialization and deserialization. So whenever I say data deserialization in which this DE is in brackets, it means I am referring to data serialization and data deserialization, that is both. So data deserialization helps in making data exchange between processes running on heterogeneous machines independent of underlying operating system, compiler, programming language, hardware variation, etc. So this is very important use of data deserialization that it helps in facilitating the communication between the two machines which are actually heterogeneous in nature. Now the two machines could be heterogeneous in nature in various ways. For example, they are running different operating systems, they may be running different compilers or they may have different hardware architecture altogether. So you can see in this diagram, we have a sending process and we have a receiving process and when the sending process tries to send its internal data structure to the receiving process, the internal data has to be processed by the data serializer on the sending machine. The job of this data serializer routine is to convert the program's internal data structures into serialized data. Then in the next step, this serialized data travels over the network and reaches the receiving process which may be running on some remote machine on the network. Now before the receiving process actually starts processing the serialized data, the serialized data needs to be processed by the data deserializer which is actually running on the receiving machine. The job of this data deserializer is to, is to reconstruct the original data structures from this serialized data. So the end result is that, that the sending process can send its internal data to the receiving process by being independent of underlying operating systems, compilers, programming languages, hardware and many more. So let us try to understand why we need data deserialization with the help of an analogy. 
so you can see that there are two friends and these two friends or you can say they are business partners and they want to convey their ideas to each other but there is a barrier the barrier is that that one of them understand only french as a language whereas the other one understand only chinese right and both of them do not know any other third common language so there is a language barrier because of which they cannot exchange their ideas or carry out any verbal or written communication so what is the solution here well you can think of the solution very easily in order to facilitate communication between these two partners obviously you would need a mediator so this mediator is also called a translator and it has a very minimal property that it understands both the french and chinese right so any statement that is generated by the french guy will be transformed by the mediator into chinese and any statement that is generated by the chinese guy will be transformed by the mediator into french so this is how mediator will make the communication between the french and the chinese guy possible so this is a very real world simple analogy that maps to data serialization and deserialization so here mediator is a deserializer who performs serialization now here serialization means converting the statement spoken by the french guy into chinese right and mediator also performs deserialization that is converting the same statement from chinese to the french that is converting the statement that is spoken by the chinese guy to the french so you can see that the mediator is a person who facilitate the bidirectional communication between the french and the chinese guy so this is a very simple real world analogy which perfectly maps to the concept of data serialization and data deserialization